Oh, Jack. Jack O'Hara. Boy, you asked me some interesting questions, my man. It's a great question, Jack. Jack, hey, it's Josh Radner. Hey there, Jack O'Hara. It's Johnny Damon. Jack, so you had questions for me. Jack O'Hara? Absolutely. This message is for Jack O'Hara. Jack, how are you? Hey, Jack. Jack, hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? What's going on, Jack? Uh, listen, man, you know, you, you, you asked me a couple questions. Broadcasting around the world. You're listening to The O Show. In the show and uh, doing your thing, I mean, you've got some pretty big name guests. I've seen your, your stuff, so congratulations on your success. Jack O'Hara. Much nicer guy than Conan O'Brien with much better interviewing skills. Don't forget to share this episode on your social media. Now, let's get to it. I'm so boned. I forgot to get my girl tickets for the show tomorrow, and now it's sold out. It's her freaking birthday. Oh, dude. She's only gonna break up with you. She's definitely gonna break up with me. Should've used tick pick. Wait, what'd you say? Tick pick. Look. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What? There are no hidden fees. What'd you guys think I said? Oh, tick pick. I thought you said tick pick. No hidden fees. Download today. Great, Bell. What's going on, man? Yo, what's up, bro? Nothing much. Nothing much. Just uh, enjoying the Phoenix weather. You're you're in LA, right? Yep. Just uh, just got back from LA. I mean, I just got back to LA. I was uh, I was in Hawaii for the past month. Oh wow. Which is pretty nice. What are you doing? You, you, are, are you playing? You filming? What are you doing? No, I'm just trying to get through this quarantine. Trying to get through this uh, pandemic. Oh, just hanging out, I guess. Yeah. Trying yep. to find a way. Yep. Trying to trying to. Get back to playing shows one day. Oh, that's true, dude. So, uh, have you been focusing more on your music right now as opposed to anything else? Yeah, mostly music, yeah. So, what have you been, because, again, like, you just came out with uh, uh, your new stuff, your new Spanish stuff. You've always mixed it up a little bit, because you've been playing since you were a little kid, right? Because... Yeah. None of your stuff's the same. It's like you're not like a uh, you know like a genre esque uh, singer songwriter. You're kind of like all over the place, inspired by a bunch of different uh, genres. Yeah, totally, totally. I mean, that's like every single one of my records is like totally different. It's just like what I'm what I'm into listening to right now. That's what I want to write, and then it's it's yeah, it's very all over the place. <laughs> so, who are your some of your biggest inspirations? I'm a big rock and roll guy. I, Guns T-shirt right behind me here, but who who are some of like your biggest inspirations when it came to music growing up? Uh, the Beatles, the Beach Boys, um, Elvis, uh, the Stray Cats, Jeff Lynn, ELO. I don't know. I mean, it's it's hard to say like who like my biggest because I, I I have such an, a vast like knowledge and appreciation for like pop music, right? Like everything. Um, but I think like my the gods are, you know, Brian Wilson, right. the Beatles, Queen. There you go. So how, how much of, because, again, music, actor, how, how much of that, you know, goes hand in hand? Or was it music first, then, of course, as a child actor growing up into it, uh, did they go hand in hand, or were they two separate things at first? Well, I, I, I started acting first when I, like, when I was a kid, you know, yeah. I was like five years old when I started acting and then um when I got to, when I was around like 11 12 years old I was I was always into music because I was a huge fan of music I like started trying to play drums when I was little and got a drum set and everything and was always like into you know wanting to make music because I loved music so much but uh, I picked up guitar at around like 12 yeah and that's when I was like oh wait I could figure I could like learn this and then like write my own songs put bands together and do all that so that's where I that's when it really became like full focus obsession yeah and then obviously kind of culminating that uh, being a child actor getting all these really cool roles growing up whether it was like Seinfeld um, uh, Jerry McGraw McGuire with uh, Tom Cruise uh, and by the way getting to tell Tom Cruise to F off in a movie that, that's that's pretty cool, dude. Not a lot of yeah. not a lot of kids can say that. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I I, I was uh, <laughs> I was reading the story of how your mom was kind of telling everybody to go watch the movie because you know her her little boy was gonna be in a movie with Tom Cruise and and that was that was your big line and uh, yep. 
And she kind of regretted it, huh? Yeah, she's like telling everyone at church, like, oh, my mom, you go see my son in the new movie. I'm like, oh, no, mom, don't tell your church friends to go see this movie. That's hilarious. And and the other thing I found very fascinating was, because what it was like a three-day period of you guys writing Found a Way and pitching it to Dan Snyder, and it, it, it culminating in him kind of showing everybody, like, all right, we got to get this past Nickelodeon, but this is going to be our theme song for Drake and Josh. That's exactly right, yeah. We spent a weekend, uh, really just Saturday, writing it. And then I played it for him on Monday. And that was just like, became found a way. Unbelievable. Like, what was your plan going into that? Like, you, you guys are trying to write a theme song for a TV show, but at the same time trying to make it your own. Like, did you have, like, a specific style that you wanted it to be going in? Was it tough creating well, I mean, the song? When we first went in, when we first went in, we know we were like, Whatever happened to predictability? Yeah, right. Eating on TV, and then we were like, oh, well, or like, uh, days gone by on the sun and the sun. And then we, you know, we're thinking like, wake up in the morning when the alarm goes off. Right. Of all these different amazing theme songs throughout the years, and we we're just like, man, how are we going to compete with these? Like, and so we were trying and trying, and then nothing was coming. And then finally, I just said, you know, let's not waste the day. Um, uh, doing this let's actually um uh, let's just write a song like forget try to write a theme song let's just write a song and so the um the song we started to write was just like these kind of little cool little like elvis costello we like kind of rock like yeah like, kind of like a cars you know thing. right 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 and uh we started writing in the melody and everything and i was like wait this is actually kind of cool let's make this like if it was about friends or brothers or like, like let's not make this a love song. Let's make right. this like, hey, I'm picking you up when you're down. Like, I'll always be there for you. Like, I'm your bro. I'm your da da da. Let's so, like go with the show. And then we just like did it. And I was like, dude, I think we have a theme song here. And uh, so we like got to the pre chorus and the chorus and like wrote it all and did like a little one minute version, you know, like what you basically see on TV. Oh, yeah. That, that short version. And uh, took that into Dan. And, and he, he was like, dude, I don't want to listen to this because what if I don't like it? And, uh, what am I supposed to do? Tap my foot, snap my finger? Like, let me listen to this and then I'll call you about it. And I'm like, no, 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 just listen to it now. I'm really excited for you to hear it. And if you don't like it, just tell me you don't like it. I'll, I'll use the song for something else. Like, I right. don't care. And he heard it and he's like, oh my God, that's our theme song. That's incredible. And was the premise of the show ever to be like, like you said, like it's not going to be a love story song, but it's going to be about two best friends, two brothers. Like what was your guys' plan going into that? Because I know you guys were talking about that before it was even on the table, you and Josh, for creating your own show together. Yeah, I mean, we always talked about that. Um, you know, when we were younger, when we were on the Amanda show, we'd be like, oh man, when, you know, when we get our own show, it should be about this, we should do this and that, you know. Right. But that was just messing around, but... um. But yeah, no, once we, because we'd already shot the pilot, so we knew what the show was about. <clears throat> we just hadn't had the, uh, we were using a, like a Letty Kravitz, so once you dig in, you're going to have yourself a good time for the theme song. Oh, interesting. And I was like, yeah, but if I was like in the other room and I heard that, I'd be like, what, Letty Kravitz video, music video, or like a commercial for something? Like, it's not going to like tell me Drake and Josh is on, you know? Right. And so I, uh, I told Dan, I was like, yeah, well, I, I I think that, you know, having a, an original theme song is going to be a lot better because now kids are going to be like, oh, Drake and Josh is on. They, like, they hear it from the other room or, like, they hear, you know, it's got to stand on its own. And um, so we'd already known what the the story was, so we were able to kind of tailor the lyrics around it being much more, like, uh, two unlikely, you know, people coming together and not necessarily being about like oh i love you you love me it's more of like hey i've got your back you got my back like i'm always going to be there for you kind of thing all right and do you, that's your song right that's licensed to you and not nickelodeon yeah oh that's sweet do you play that at some of your shows everyone that, that's got to be like your hit song then Pe people must go nuts every time well, they hear it's it funny i i i play, I play shows and I, I say that all the time i'm like you know i may have never had a number one they never had a top 10, but there is not one place in the world that I can go and play the song and not have every single person in the audience sing along to it. Right. I'm like, so technically, this is a hit. 
That's unbelievable, dude. And uh, again, I think we have like 10 minutes here, but I, I have one more question for you. You know, like it being the hit show, you guys having awesome chemistry together, all the bits you did in the show, uh, whether you guys up in the treehouse, which I read was one of your favorites. Did you guys ever have any bits that you worked on and wrote on that uh, didn't make it to air? Or did you guys have more creative control uh, with Dan more than anything else for everything that you did? Um... I mean, if it was funny, it made the air. Yeah. And it, it's not so much like having like creative control. It's being, it's just being able to, because Dan's very precise about like what's on the page. Do, you know, not like ad libbing and doing this and doing that. But sometimes we would, you know, and like they would keep things, and then you know we would try be like, okay, well let's do this one not like this, and then let's do one where we're just you know go crazy or so. Um, but I can't think of any specific ones that didn't make the air, um, because usually if it was funny and it just happened, then that was the one that we were, you know, made 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 it to the air. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, we weren't so much as like in the creative process in the writers' room or anything like that. It was more so of like once we get it on its feet and it's like in our mouths and we're saying and we're doing our moves and doing our blocking and everything like that. That's when it would become like our time to uh you know make it our own and add and take out whatever you know what i mean right so how was it working for dan because the guy's work ethic i think is insane like he he's doing i don't know how many shows he does on nickelodeon at, at, at this point but w when he was working with you guys uh, it was the amanda show and then that was his next show drake and josh uh, how, how, again, like you guys had a ton of creative freedom, uh, when it came to writing most of those stuff, most of those bits, but how is it working for Dan, you know, like him being a perfectionist as a, as a director and producer? Well, he's an absolute perfectionist, but so am I. So I, I, I totally understand. Um, I understand it. And I think that, you know, I, I don't know. A lot of people have a lot of complaints working for Dan just because he is such a perfectionist. He does 50 takes of something. He does it till it's right. But I've always appreciated that because I've always, I, 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 I'm the same way in the, my music with everything. I want it to be perfect. Like I, you know, obviously you're never going to get it perfect, but I, I, I want it to be the best that I can possibly get it to be, you know? And uh, if it takes a little longer, or it's a little harder, like it's worth it, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's an absolute perfectionist. He's just, he's a genius. He's, you know, he's really incredible. And he's a really sweet guy, too. I mean, he's like, he's always been there for me. He's a total bro. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I, I would work with him tomorrow. You know what I mean? Right. I've always, throughout the years, I've always been like, hey, Dan, let's do something here. Let's do this over here. Just because, like, like going and working for Dan would be like just like going home, you know. Like when I'm working on other stuff with other people, you're like, oh man, now I gotta like get used to how they want to work, how they. Do and like working with Dan, I'm like, oh dude, I've done two shows with you. I've done a couple movies with you. I've like spent my entire adolescence with you. Like, I just I'd be like going home, I'd be like, please put me on a show with you, so I just like can just coast. You know? Wow. So so starting out, and this will be my last question, but starting out, were there any difficult growing pains when working with him? You know, because again, like working uh, cameos on Seinfeld and working with Tom Cruise in a film as well, like how did that compare with him? Um, well, it's, it's really just different because yeah. on, on those other shows, like I was really like, you know, on anything I guessed it on or anything like that, like I'd say more so like movies. Cause then you're with the directors for a while and you're working with them for a long time. But when you just do a guest spot on a TV show, I mean, you're with them for a week, four days or three days, you come in, you do your two scenes and then you're like, peace out. See you later. You know, just get there and do what you need to do. Um, but uh, but no, I, I, I think that it was it was a lot of fun working with Dan because you could be, you know, crazy and wild and, 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 and over the top and and you know where you know you could you could be like, Hey Dan, can I try it this way? Can I do it this way? Can I do it that way? And where everyone else would complain about it um, being uh, like, oh, like, let's go home. Or, like, we've already done yeah. 10 takes. Like, move on. Like, oh, it's so annoying to work for him. You know, for me, I was like, sweet. Like, like let's get as let's get as much as we can in the tank, in the in the can, so that when you go to edit, like, you have all these great things to play with, you know, and get the best product. So I've always, you know, loved working with him. 
Yeah, and then, of course, the Tom Cruise, it helps that you get to uh, tell him to F off in the movie. Yeah, that was really good. He's amazing. He's one of the coolest actors I've ever worked with. I mean, he's the kind of actor that, like, knows everybody by their first name. He says good morning. He's just, like, he's so approachable. He's so collaborative. He was, it was really cool. So what do you think of uh, everything that's going on with him right now? The stuff that came out when it came to uh, him screaming at his cast and everything. Oh, oh, oh. Dude, rightfully so. Like, yeah. do, do what you got to do on set. I don't want to get shut down. You know? That, that's what I thought, too. Like, yeah, you know, like, be stupid. take it like men, you know? Yeah. I'm so boned. I forgot to get my girl tickets for the show tomorrow, and now it's sold out. It's her freaking birthday. Oh, dude. She's totally gonna break up with you. She's definitely gonna break up with me. Should've used tick pick. Wait, what'd you say? Tick pick. Look. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. What? There are no hidden fees. What'd you guys think I said? Oh, tick pick. I thought you said... Tick pick. No hidden fees. Download today.